Hello, this is Craig Shoemaker, New Media Evangelist for Infragistics. And before we get started, there's just a few things I'd like to share with you. If you have any questions about this screencast, please feel free to email me at cshoemaker at infragistics.com. If you have any support questions, please go to infragistics.com slash get help. And if you'd like to check out the documentation on any one of our controls, please go over to infragistics.com slash docs. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Hello there and welcome to our ongoing series on the Web Data Grid, a new control found in NetAdvantage 2008 Volume 3. What I'd like to do is give you a brief overview of some of the read-only behaviors and show you how easy it is to get up and running quickly with this control. So let's start off, we just got a, a regular ASP.NET application. This is built against the 3.5 framework. And the first control that I'd like to add onto the page is a script manager. Now the script manager is necessary because the grid will use a lot of JavaScript for its interaction and we harness the ASP.NET AJAX library based on our Arquito framework and so the script manager is required. Next we'll bring in the web data grid itself and then finally we'll bring in a way to access the database. Let's bring on a SQL data source. To configure the data source we'll come in and, and I have an existing connection set up to Northwind. If you need to get a copy of Northwind to follow along in this demo, you can go to the URL down here at the bottom of the screen, and that's a place where you can download the scripts to get everything set up on your machine. So we'll click through next here. What I'd like to do is take a look at the products table, and for right now, we'll select all products so we have enough data to work with, and we'll click Finish. Next, we'll come over to the Web Data Grid itself and associate the data source ID to our SQL data source. Once we've done that, the Smart tag will update, and we can now edit the behaviors. I'd like to go ahead and bring in activation, column resizing. We're going to skip editing core right now because that's uh, for the editing features. That's a, another screencast. We'll turn on filtering, paging, row selectors, selection, and sorting. Now there's one customization I would like to make. There's actually a lot of ways you can customize each one of these behaviors, but to keep it simple, I'm just going to come over here and change the selection to be a row selection and the, the row selected type to be single. That way we'll be able to differentiate some of the different behaviors that we see. Finally, I'm going to come over to properties and I'm going to tell the grid to make sure to take up 100% of the allowed screen size. And from there, we can run it and see what we've got. Now you'll notice out of the box, there's, there's quite a bit of functionality already set up in here. So let's go through each one of the behaviors that we took a look at. If I come in and click on a cell, you'll notice that there is a dotted border around the cell. That's our activation at work. Activation will tell the user in a visual way with this border of which one is the active cell. Now you'll notice I hit the tab key in order to change that and I can tab through and it'll go row by row. If I do shift tab, it will go backwards as well. What's happening also is client side and also server side events will fire when the active cell changes. So it gives you full access to how the grid will behave when the active cell is changed. Next we have column resizing. Now the column resizing works just as you would expect. Any one of these columns uh, can be resized. Further customizations would allow you to turn column resizing on and off per column and also supply minimum and maximum widths that you could uh, resize the columns to. Now a feature that I really like, which has a lot of functionality just automatically available, is the filtering. So if I come in here to product name and I say that I want to take a look at products that have EA in the string, as soon as I hit enter, the, the list is filtered and now I can see what I've got. Now you can chain these, so I could come over to unit price and say that I'd like to take a look at uh, products that have EA in them with a unit price that's uh, greater than 20. And so when I do that, it filters it even further. In order to clear the filters, I can simply click on the, the filter icon and click clear filter and do that to the next one over here and now I'm back to my original query. Now something you'll notice with the filtering and also with the paging, if I page through some of these, these pages here, you notice that AJAX calls are being used in order to, to make the request back to the server. Now when I set this up, I didn't put it inside of any sort of update panel or anything. The AJAX is supported automatically. Obviously, you can turn it off if you'd like, but a, a lot of times working with these grids, people will like the AJAX functionality, and so it's been turned on by default. Next, let's take a look at the row selectors. There's a column here over at the left-hand side that's been added, and it allows you an easy way to select the entire row of data. 
there's even further customizations that you can do on this. In fact, you can set this up that you have uh, row numbers to make it easy for people to reference rows in the grid. Uh, but the row selectors are over here at the side and again make it really easy to have the entire row of data selected. The selection behavior will allow you to, to know what's selected, whether it's an entire row, an entire column, or a single cell. And so the selection behavior will give you events that you can tap into, client side and server side, in order to find out, again, whether it's, a, it's an entire column, a row, or a single cell that's selected. Finally, sorting works just exactly as you'd expect. If you click on a uh, header, you get it sorted one way, and then click on it again, and you get it sorted the other way. You can obviously customize it to uh, default to the direction that you'd like, and you can also set up multi-sort. So if you press the control key and click on separate headers, you can have uh, the, the multi-tiered sorting. Well, this has been the read-only behaviors on the web data grid. I hope you found the screencast useful, and I hope you have a lot of fun with the control. Thanks. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.